The Amistad Center is a place that offers opportunities to explore and understand the personalities, events, and creative genius of people of African descent who have shaped American history and contributed to this country's culture. I'm Nathan O'Leary at the Kent McRae Television Studio at the University of Hartford, and Olivia White, Executive Director of the Amistad Center, joins Newsmakers. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. The founding of the Amistad Center is uh, both unique and inspiring. Can you share that story? I certainly can. In 1987, a handful of visionaries that included individuals, corporations, and the state of Connecticut got together to purchase, protect, and provide public access to a fabulous collection of 6,000 objects then, but now 7,000 works of art and artifacts and documents that really speak to the entire history of Africans in America. It was held by a private collector in a small farmhouse in Northford, Connecticut, and really needed to be moved to a big museum in Hartford so that the public could see it for generations to come. And that, that person, the farmhouse, was belonged to Randolph Lindsley Simpson. Why was he such a dedicated collector of objects that documented more than 300 years of black experience Absolutely. in Absolutely. Well, first of all, he was not African-American. However, his early life was spent in Rochester, New York, which was very close to the Canadian border on Lake Erie and played an important role in the Underground Railroad. So he was exposed to Frederick Douglass. In fact, Frederick Douglass is buried there. And actually, Randolph Lindsley Simpson's mother is a descendant of abolitionists. Mm -hmm. So I think preserving African-American history, telling that story of the strength and struggle of that, of that time and the civil rights through the mid-20th century was really, really important to him from an early age. What are some highlights of the collection? Well, the highlights of the collection, one is the range. We have slave shackles. And we have contemporary art created by the greatest conceptual artists of today, artists of color. So the range is really significant. When you have 7,000 objects, you can imagine. We have newspapers. We have cookie jars. We have stereotypical wow. material. We have fine art by Herbert Gentry, um, Romare Bearden. We have a full range of, of objects. Um, the other thing is I would like to think that if, if Randolph Lindsley Simpson were here today, he would say one of the most precious pieces was actually painted by his uncle, and that is a painting of John Brown's home in Torrington, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And we show that very frequently. And so we like the idea that while it's a national treasure, it is a local gem and tells many, many local stories. And exceptionally, uh, you know, the, the name of the Amistad Center, why was Amistad chosen? I think Amistad um, was chosen because our founders felt that it immediately signifies African American history and strength. There are many, many organizations in the country that have the name Amistad in them. The Research Center at Tulane, of course, the Freedom Schooner, which now is, is uh, circulating and, and is re reminiscent of the slave ship. Um, there's so many organizations that have the name Amistad in them. And I think it immediately brings to mind African-American history and strength. And the Amistad Center is, is essentially it's a museum within a museum. Uh, so what is the relationship with the Wadsworth Athenaeum? Well, we're very fortunate to be an institutional partner with the Wadsworth Athenaeum. The Amistad Center is legally a separate nonprofit organization, separate management, separate board of uh, directors. We raise our money for our programs, but the Wadsworth provides in-kind services and enables cross-cultural conversation between art and people that you don't find any place else in this country. Well, very unique center. Olivia White, Executive Director of the Amistad Center. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for joining us for Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Nathan O'Leary.